Oh, <laughs> oh my gosh. It's so amazing. I have a bad feeling about this. Oh shoot. Well, that was exciting. Hey everybody, welcome back to RC with Adam. My name is Adam and today I hope you're doing great. I've got a fun video for you. What I'm gonna do is I'm gonna try and take everything from this big five inch quadcopter, the motors and the stack and maybe the camera and stuff. And I'm gonna try and stick it on this three inch quadcopter frame and get it to fly. So I think this is gonna be fun. I probably won't get it right on the first shot, but we're gonna give it a try. So let's get started. Slap like now. The first thing we need to do is take these things apart and get all the electronics separate from the frame and then we can work on slapping them back together. Set this in there for safekeeping. And now let's take apart this five inch quadcopter. Now, the tricky part is this part right here. So we need to try and get all of this stuff onto this tiny frame. And I want to use as large of propellers as I possibly can. So this is probably just gonna take a bunch of trial and error and fiddling around. And so we'll speed this up and get going here. What? This is not good. This is not working. Oh. Wait, what? I guess this frame is thicker. Yeah, this frame is thicker than the old frame. Bit shorter and they'll squish down. But they will keep everything insulated and provide hopefully enough space so that things won't overheat. Okay, now that that's done, um, oh my goodness, what are we going to do here? I think if I'm going to make this work, I'm going to have to design some 3D printed adapters. I could drill more holes in this frame, but I don't really want to. All right, I'm going to need to think about this very heavily, and then I will come up with a solution and we will get back on this. All right, so we have the parts here. We have the short mounts, which hopefully will be uh, tall, just tall enough. Um, and then we have the taller ones. These are 10 millimeter. And then the short ones are, I believe these are three millimeter. I like that, I like that. These, these walls didn't quite close. I wish they had right there where the circle is. I wish that those were just uh, closed, but I guess I didn't make the walls thick enough. I didn't really measure that out. Now we have to figure out how we're going to kind of put these things on here. Like we got to figure out, I'm thinking about putting the propellers alternating was kind of my thought. So you'd have it diagonal on the top and diagonal on the bottom. And this would be full five inch propellers, that's, that's the goal. I want this to go on here like so, okay. 
which is kind of weird because it's going to end up sticking out. Okay, I'm only mostly confused. One down. Wow, this is just getting all mixed up all over the place. My goodness gracious. Why haven't I attached this one yet? Yeah, almost perfect. If it was like a millimeter taller. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Good enough. All right. Oh my gosh, look at this thing. This is, is this not just ridiculous? <laughs> this looks about like how I was hoping that it would look. Look how ridiculous that is. Okay, let's get some props. That's pretty neat. Okay, so let's say we have this one on there. And we put that one on there. So are these gonna hit each other? Not really. Oh my gosh, look, does that not look amazing? Oh man, oh man. Okay, now this is a little concerning. Yep, that's gonna hit. And then uh, that's gonna hit that. Uh, is that gonna hit it? Why is that not gonna hit it? It could very well be because the bell is, it's a different type of bell. So, or it's a different, you know, different type of rotor. It's, see how it's raised up a little bit with this little lip? And this one is super flat. So, uh, we can fix that. Here we go, let's bind up the receiver and just see if we can get the motors spinning and which way they spin and kind of figure out what we're gonna have to change in beta flight and stuff in order to actually get this thing working. Get these switches set up, blah, blah, blah. Uh, let's see, so we have this one spinning in, this one's spinning in, this one's spinning in, and this one is spinning in also. That's good, but, so let's say we turn this, oh my gosh. What is going on? Okay, so uh, uh, here's the thing. If, you, if we look in beta flight, the flight controller is actually upside down and backwards. So what we'll have to do is we'll have to flip it over, turn it around in beta flight, and then we also need to get the motors to work properly. This thing is getting so hot, I can just smell things like melting, and that's kind of kind of scary. So let's, uh, wow. I've got to do some technical stuff in beta flight and basically get this thing to think that it's uh, gonna fly in the correct direction. These motor mounts are actually making me a little bit worried because like they're kind of loose. Now I am just going to put a little bit of hot glue where the frame meets up with the plastic. Uh, Betaflight setup, had to switch a few things around, remap some motors, and we can test this out. So right now it's in auto level mode, and so when it's in auto level mode, if I roll this to the left, the left hand motors will speed up. I can hear them spinning faster, I can feel them spinning faster because it's trying to correct itself. Um, same for the right side motors and forwards. If I pitch forwards, the forward motors are going to speed up to bring the quadcopter back to level, because again, we're in auto level mode. Wow, 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 wow. Remember, a very common beginner mistake is to not have the prop nuts tight enough. You want to have them almost as tight as you can tighten them. You don't want to strip the threads, but you want them very, very tight so the propellers do not move. They can't spin around the motor shaft. All right, let's just hook up the battery here to do a test hover and ha, huh, 
just kidding. We're not gonna do a test hover inside. We're gonna take this thing outside because this this could seriously do some choppy chops uh, to the table and everything here. So let's take this outside and test it out right now. This is gonna be so crazy. I just wanna see if it will at least like hover. If we can at least hover this thing, that'll be good because I might need to fix a bunch of stuff if it doesn't work. <laughs> okay, you ready? Ready, here we go. I'm gonna back up <clears throat> a good bit. Oh. 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 <laughs> oh my gosh. It's so amazing. <gasps> what is going on? Look at this. Oh, that is, oh. Oh, that's actually really nice. I think I did a pretty good job with the rates too. They might be a little slow though. Oh my gosh, that is awesome. It's the next day, I think. Yeah, it doesn't sound super great, but it's pretty smooth. Oh, look at that. Oh, that's so cool. Okay. Oh yeah, it actually seems to handle pretty well. Ooh. We'll get this thing set up for some super sweet B-roll. Time to actually fly this thing. Let's get this quadcopter rocking and rolling. I'm so nervous. This thing is crazy. Oh yeah, we got some shutters for sure. For sure. Oh, I have a bad feeling about this. Very bad feeling. Okay, it's not gonna work. Okay, I gotta set her down. Dang it, 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 dang it. Okay, these goggles are really starting to annoy me. Here we go, take two actual flights with this thing. Okay. All right, hopefully you can hear me. All right, and arming. Oh shoot. Oh, that's really bad. That's really, really bad. Oh crap. Oh no. Ah, oh, jeez. That's bad. Oh, I should, oh, I should get some water on that. super good. I guess some builds just aren't meant to fly. That was pretty exciting though. Well, that was exciting. Uh, yeah, definitely the whole catching on fire part. Oh shoot. Was the grand finale of this video and the end of this project for now. But before I wrap up this video, I think we should do a little debrief to kind of see what we've learned and what the heck happened. All right, let's take a closer look at this thing. Wow, okay, a couple, th what, what strikes me the most, 
Oh my goodness gracious, this thing got hot. Let's zoom in here. Woo, this thing still stinks. Don't breathe this for sure. Um, <clears throat> it's also still very sooty. But take a look at this right here. This is just bananas. I mean, this thing was not on fire for very long, um, but it melted this, uh, this screw right here. See that? It's just a melted blob now, and it used to be like this, like this hex screw. And these are metal screws. These are not plastic screws. Also, you can see the weave in the, the of the carbon fiber, the actual fibers of the carbon fiber. Look at that, totally just delaminated. It just melted the epoxy holding these fibers together. That is incredible. Um, and then you can see here, the these propellers got the worst of it. And this, this motor right here got the worst of it. It's very black right there, but the motor itself looks good. So at first I thought a motor caught on fire, but it, I don't think that's the case. And it's spinning nicely, especially after washing, uh, washing out all the motors and stuff. I'm definitely gonna take these motors apart, but I think I can reuse the motors. Definitely not this prop though. You can see here, it must have gotten kinda stuck around this position. And you can see all kinds of soot on the arm here. Let's take this off. Of course, everything is wet right now. So not, really not a lot of damage. Like I thought all of these would just be a big melted mess. Probably just push it through the carbon fiber actually. We'll just kind of pry it off of here. I'm not worried about reusing that standoff. For sure. Um, yeah, that just got so hot. Just, uh, just way too hot. Just, I think, I think it just did not have enough clearance for, uh, for cooling, and possibly, you know, maybe it made contact with the frame somewhere. Maybe it like melted through the silicone standoffs or something. Wow, 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 wow. All right, there you have it. Wow, that was pretty crazy. So what did we learn? Well. I learned that you can actually put five inch propellers on a three inch quadcopter frame and it will actually fly. It'll actually, well, I think it'll fly pretty decently. We didn't actually get to test it out fully, you know, fly it around FPV and stuff, um, but it will actually fly pretty well and you don't really have to do a whole lot uh, in terms of like the, the quadcopter setup. I got more experience pre, uh, 3D printing uh, and designing parts for whatever project that I'm working on. We learned that wet sand works very well to put out fires. So sand, remember sand is the best thing for putting out fires or battery fires. Luckily, this was not a battery fire situation. We also learned that you can successfully um, attach a different motor rotor to another stator and it will work. Maybe not super duper well, but it will definitely work, might, uh, might come in handy someday. Most importantly, we learned that you need to provide adequate space for electronics cooling because we didn't do that, I think. And I think that is why this thing ended up the way that it did. And um, that's, that's not good. Also, you want to make sure that you are using adequate ESCs for the motors and the propellers that you're going to be using. This ESC was rated for, I think like 30, I think it was 30 amps, might've been 20 amps, but uh, no, no, it just, I don't, I don't, I don't, I don't, I don't, I don't think so. Um, and maybe it could do that. Maybe it would have handled better if we had proper cooling, but because we did not, bad, bad things happen. Another thing that we kind of learned is that potentially, if you have a bottom mounted battery on your quadcopter, eh, it's maybe less likely to catch on fire if your ESC catches on fire because it's below everything else. So that could potentially be good. Uh, on the other hand, if you crash into something and your battery gets punctured and catches on fire, well, all of your electronics are right above your battery. so they would get fried. So uh, I guess I guess that's a thing that we learned. Yeah, that's definitely picking up there. So I have a drum instructor next door, so 
don't don't mind that if you just hear a beat being dropped, okay? I learned that uh, there is probably a reason why there are different frame sizes for different propeller sizes. And just because you can fit a certain size propeller or motor on a certain size frame, uh, doesn't always mean that you should or that it's the most optimized way of doing things. I'll tell you what folks, mostly the most important thing that I learned, even more important than uh, things will catch on fire if you're not careful, is that it is really great to do an idea that you've had and to just try something out. Um, at this point, I should probably say, do not try this at home. Don't catch things on fire. Be very careful. Please don't sue me. But at the same time, I encourage you to follow your creative ideas. And sometimes the only way that you find things out is by actually giving it a try, experimenting, and uh, hopefully, hopefully you'll have something good happen. But even if it seems like a failure, you will definitely be able to learn something from it. Thanks for watching everybody. I appreciate you. I appreciate your time. Thanks for hanging out. Leave me a comment if you like this video and let me know what you learned from this video. Also, no, no, there's actually no also. Thanks for watching everybody. Stay safe out there. Keep creating and I will see you again very soon.